So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends, in a tower, in a realm that is no more. Tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. What's happening? Oh. 
Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. Oh. <gasps> oh, the suffering we must endure. What? Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? Torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking... tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the wood spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. Be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. 
The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah. The baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby. Oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. Uh-oh. Was that? Uh oh. It is you. You have come. You know me? April, daughter, I have been waiting for you. Waiting? Why? Because it begins here with you. As it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending. The pain and the joy. The end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is. But you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you. And I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing. have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. It doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. It's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past, who needs it? All right, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. When fame and wealth come knocking, I'll buy a wardrobe the size of an ocean liner and fill it with clothes for a million bucks. Right now, I'll try to focus on my work. That's my desk, so, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though, because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. I worry about the exhibition coming up in two weeks. This is the net result of my work. A pile of nothing. And it's not even a big pile of nothing. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. Dear diary, note to self. Dreams of talking trees and dragons aside, it's still no excuse for talking to inanimate matter in the real world. So quit it! I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though.
Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? I don't really have time to hang around. Then how about hanging out with me tonight? A few raptures, some hot dancing. Ah, did I tell you I got a VIP pass to the pavilion? Those things are hard to come by, babe. No, that's not gonna work, Zack. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You'll come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. What an asshole. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, true holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. If you upgrade now... Hold on! You understood that. You have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. If you take advantage of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future, or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. FUB? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps. And she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know. Bastards. 
I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt. And although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. What's up with Zack Lee? Zack? I think we've both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice, and I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. 
You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases, I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area and that about 100 years ago, they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got a... Mm, an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, mm, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The city? Oh, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know.
I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know what's strange? I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope I never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Oye, senorita. Yes? How are you this morning, senorita bonita? I'm fine. And you? Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie? Like all good movies. But tell me, senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Hot and sunny like this one. Well, then, you should be happy to be alive today, yes? It is a perfect day. But you are not happy, are you? You are troubled by nightmares. What? You are afraid of them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please, think about it. And señorita, cuidado. Be careful. Hiya. Emma? Hi! I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. Yeah? From whom? Believe it or not, girlfriend, but it's from Cortez. Excuse me? He said to tell you that he wants to meet you, these are his exact words, where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. 
Did he say anything else? No, nope, that was it. Why does he want to meet you? Oh, don't tell me. You guys are having a secret love affair. Oh, yeah. We're eloping and flying to Africa tonight. It's all been happening so fast. My heart's a flutter. Oh, how romantic. I couldn't imagine a better catch than Senor Cortez, the Latin lover. <laughs> Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. And a dragon is just a dragon. What's dragons got to do with it? Oh, don't tell me you had a dream about dragons. A dragon. A talking dragon. I'm gonna regret this, but what happened in your dream? Well, there was a dragon. I think we established that already. You had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me, something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye. not a dream, I think. Hi, Charlie. April. Nice to see you, girl. You know, I came to wake you this morning, but you had already left. Early bird catches the worm. No, early bird finishes the damn painting on time. <laughs> have you seen Cortez around? As a matter of fact, I have. And he was asking for you. He asked about me? Yeah, where you were. He had a message for you. I told him to give it to Emma, that she would be more likely to bump into you. I got it, but I have no idea what it means. Cortez can be a little strange. Do you know where he was going? No, but he seemed interested in that poster next to the jukebox. They put it up earlier today. What poster did you say he was interested in? The one right next to the jukebox. Do you have any idea where kids would be able to, um, visualize their dreams? Maybe in therapy? I don't think that's it, Charlie. Then I don't know. Thanks. Anytime, April. How's work going today? Aside from the trouble with the plumbing, Everything's been peaceful. Emma's here with Marcus and Isabel. Other than that, I mean, it's been a quiet morning. Everyone must be home out of the sun, yeah? Or on holiday. Perfect time for it, too. The city's just boiling in July, and it gets even hotter in August. You should have stayed out in the country until the autumn, girl. It's cooler out there, yeah? Yeah, the summers were cooler back home. Uh, I remember my home. It got so hot sometimes. My father worked as a volunteer fireman, and sometimes he'd borrow the old truck from the garage. He'd fill it with spring water from the river up in the hills, and then he would hose me and my sisters down with ice-cold water. We'd laugh and scream and run around. And the funny thing is, 
His eyes light up, and he'd be so proud of himself. He could be so good, and he could be so bad. On those days, I loved him so much. They were the good days. You doing anything special tonight? Working. I should really be at rehearsal, but I need the money. I'm going home for a week before school starts in September. Right, you told me. Well, that's great. It's been years since your last trip home, right? Yeah, right. You remember well, girl. Four years. My father and I, well, we haven't been on good terms since I left. I know how that feels. Isn't it such a cliche, though? I don't look forward to seeing him again, but it will be nice to be back with the rest of the family, especially my sisters, you know, and my mom. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Charlie? Why would I mind, girl? What's your take on Cortez? Why do you want to talk about Cortez? I don't know him that well. He's been around for as long as I can remember, but I really never talked to the man. Do you think he's as crazy as some people say? No, he's not crazy. Just a little eccentric. He doesn't give a donkey's ass what people think or say about him. And that's cool. I don't know. I have a feeling there's a lot more to Cortez than what he wants us to believe. That man has had an eventful life, I'm sure. Anything else that comes to mind about Cortez? What else? I don't know what to tell you, girl. When he's not talking about books, he talks about old movies. He loves the classics, calls them real art. What was it about me that made you want to be my friend, Charlie? Everything, girl. You're a sweet peach. <laughs> no, it's true. I liked you from the very beginning. When you first came into the cafe with a suitcase in each hand, lost and bewildered. God, thanks for reminding me. I was such a country bumpkin. No, everyone who comes to Venice looks like that, girl. This is the village of the damned, don't you know? <laughs> How long have you known Emma? I met Emma about a year ago when she started studying at Vava. She moved into the room just opposite mine, and we became friends almost immediately. I like her a lot, and the two of you are the best friends I've ever had. Thanks, Charlie. The same goes for me. Did you ever tell Emma that? Yeah, I told her, and she jokes about it. That's just Emma. I know she appreciates me telling her, though. Does Emma's behavior ever worry you? She can seem a little out of control from time to time, but she's smarter than people give her credit for. I think she's able to take good care of herself. She's a brilliant artist. Her sculptures are inventive and beautiful. I know. Sometimes I'm in awe. They just don't seem to match her personality. She's a deep person, but she hides it well. She's more comfortable being a ditzy teenager than a professional artist. But around the two of us, sometimes she lets the disguise drop. I love her when she does that. Do you like living in Venice? I love Venice. I've been here three years now, and I haven't grown tired of it yet. I don't know if I ever will. Venice is like a college campus. There are so many young people here from all over the world. And the mix of nationalities and ideologies and ethnicities is refreshing and inspiring. The fact that we're also right in the middle of one of the great cities on Earth is just a bonus. Call Newport whatever you want. At least it's alive. And there's always something going on. Yeah, Venice is my kind of place. And I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. At least not as long as all my friends are living here. What about you, Charlie? What about me? Yeah? When was the last time you talked about yourself? I don't talk about myself, girl. You know that. Still, I'd like to talk about you for a bit. If you want. Just in general, or is there anything in particular you want to know? What's your biggest dream? A dark stage, a packed auditorium, and a single spotlight. 
dancing girl, don't you know? I'm a good dancer, but I need to be among the best to make it out in the real world. So I'll keep studying and I'll keep working as a waiter to support my studies, just like you. How did you end up in Venice? At home, there wasn't much professional training available for dancers. And my father, he was not happy about my choice of career. He wanted me to work in the factories like him and his father. Out here in Venice, everyone's got their own dreams. And people are supportive of each other no matter how crazy those dreams might be. Your dream isn't crazy at all, Charlie. You're already halfway there. But I still have a long way to go. You're right, girl. I can make it if I work hard enough. So can you. Because we're both just so damn talented. <laughs> Are you happy working here at the cafe? We make decent money, if that's what you mean. I don't want to be a bartender for the rest of my life, obviously. But yeah, I'm happy I have a job. And you work here too, so I get to hang out with my friend, right? If it wasn't for that, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Hard work and lousy pay. The hours are flexible, and like you said, I get to hang out with you and my other friends. That's all I wanted to know, Charlie. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. What you doing here? I... You ain't working this afternoon, are you? I don't want my employees work 24 hours a day. Go, get sleep. But I'm just... Damn, woman, do I have to babysit you? It's nice to see you too, Stanley. No, I'm not working today. I just came by to... Oh, don't ever say those two words when I'm around. I don't think my ulcer can take it. You? And nice? That's funny. No, working and not. Don't use those two words in the same sentence. Damn, I get creeps even when I say them. I'd like to get paid. Damn, woman, don't you know I got a migraine already? Paid? God damn it. Why'd they have to make that word sound so obscene? Listen, why don't you leave old Stan alone, huh? They make me feel a whole hell of a lot better. Choo, choo, be good, little girl, hmm? I'd still like to get paid, though. Mighty man, our woman. You really know how to rub it in. God damn it. Yeah, all right. You got your time sheet? Yes. Yes? Yes? Let's see it. God damn, you think I'm gonna take your word for a woman? Here you are, my timesheet. Don't say that word too loud, sweetheart. You're killing me. Let's see. What is this? Huh? No, 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 no. Did I sign this? What are you thinking? So? At least it doesn't look like it's been forged. Uh, thanks. Thanks? Where's my money? Oh, you ain't getting it now. Next week, honey. I write down this amount in my ledger. Don't you worry your head from it. I need the money now, Stanley. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we all need money now. That ain't gonna happen. Next week, I tell you. Forget that. I quit. You're quitting? You can't quit. You work for me. Nobody quits this job, honey. I can quit. And I'm quitting. I quit. Damn, woman. You know how hard it is to find people to take a crappy job like this one? I need you. Just as much as you need the money? All right. Jesus, I give you your damn money. What was it? Fifty bucks? Three hundred and seventy-five dollars, Stanley. Cash. Oh, sure. Cash. Three hundred... Are you sure? I pay you guys way too much. All right, give me your CC.
Thank you, Stanley. Fine, sure. Whatever. Hey! Just, I mean it. You free tonight? Wanna pull a shift? Sandra, she out sick and I need a replacement pronto. How about it? Yeah, I need the money. Great, hon. I'll see you here later. Don't forget. Settle this one for us, April. When did Royne Dale release Sidetracked? Oh, 04, right after the Morning Star exile, those sons of bitches. With blood on their boots. Yeah. <laughs> Told you so, Marcus. You said 03. I was closer than you. 07, and you call yourself a fan. I don't. Did you speak with Zach today? Why? He was upset. Called you a stuck-up bitch. He... what? You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even that rude to him. He thinks so. So that even if you came crawling to his door, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Said you called him an asshole. Oh, God. I really don't know when to shut my mouth, do I? Who cares? It's Zack. He hates you, so what? No great loss. That's true. So, what else is going on? What are you doing this afternoon? Actually, I came by to see if I could find Cortez. What's with you and this guy? You'd rather spend time with him than us? I have to find out what the message means. Don't look at me. I don't know anything except what I already told you. Ask Charlie. He spoke with Cortez earlier. What are you doing? Staying here. What else? I'm meeting a friend later, but that's not until 9. We're waiting for Isabel and then we're gonna eat. But I guess you're not hungry. No. Figures. I don't know why I even bother asking. Who's this friend you're meeting later? Don't tell me it's that guy you were out with last night. Are you gonna tell me I shouldn't get involved with men like him? No, no, of course not. I'm not your... You don't need me to tell you that, Emma. Well, I wish you would, because you're right. I shouldn't, he's a bastard. But he's so cute and charming and, you know, very good in bed. I, I just can't help myself. But he's not a keeper, don't worry about that. It's just this thing, just a fling. Mind if I ask you some questions, Emma? Like I don't tell you everything that's going on anyway? Of course you can ask me questions. Like, duh. What's your... Uh, take on Cortez? My take on Cortez? What's that, like a diplomatic way of saying what the F is this guy's glitch? Sure. Let's go with that one. You know, I think Cortez is a barrel of laughs. In a good way. Everybody thinks they got him all figured out, you know? Like he's the resident weirdo. But I know that just ain't true. I've talked with Cortez, and the guy is brilliant. He's weird, yeah, and he's up in the clouds, and I think he believes in aliens, which is cool. But girl, he's smart. I mean, I'm not talking professor smart here. I'm talking real life, seen it all, been there, done that, smart. Useful smart. Experienced smart. And, oh, I gotta tell you, the guy's cultured. Ask him about anything, art, music, movies, books. He's current on most topics, which scares me, because it seems he's always just, I don't know, hanging around doing nothing. He rarely goes anywhere. And it's like he's waiting for something. Or someone. Yeah, maybe Jerry Garcia. <laughs> You're bad. No, I don't think he's a doper. I mean, listen to the guy. What he says may sound a little out there, but the way he says it... No, he's not on Amethyst, that's for sure. And one more thing, he is cute. He's what? Cute. Emma, he's like 60. Did you ever see his eyes? Those are not the eyes of an old man. And so what if he's 60? He's better looking than most of the guys I date and so much nicer. Then I think you've been swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool for too long, Emma. I mean, come on, a 60-year-old screwball with a ponytail and an exotic accent? Hello? Well, we'll see. Did you speak with Charlie today? Yeah, for a few minutes. Why? 
Nothing. Just wondered is all. Uh, April, did he say anything to you at all? About what? About... Um, nothing. I mean, I don't know anything. Which isn't true because I, I don't lie, but he... Ugh, forget it. If we were having this conversation in a movie, I'd be going, like... Shit, girl, get your act together, open your eyes! But I don't think that's a good idea. Not in real life. Because real life has a nasty habit of hurting people's feelings. Did you finish your sculpture for the exhibit? Pretty much. I'm happy with it, and I know that if I go back and keep working on it, I'll just kill it. So I think I'll leave it alone. You? You know what? Don't ask. I'm praying it'll finish itself one of these days. Sure. Could happen. It could so happen. But I wouldn't count on it. <sighs> I'll have it ready in time. Yes, you will, or I'll kick your ass so hard that you'll... Okay, I got it, I got it! Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for what? For talking to you? Girlfriend, what the hell is the matter with you? Snap out of it! I gotta run. See you around, stranger. Roma Gallery presents Growing Pains. An exhibition by and for kids and teenagers. Could this be what Cortez was talking about? Where kids visualize their dreams? I think this may be it. Where's the Roma Gallery located? About time you showed up. About time? I spent more than... Mira, this painting. Right here. Look. Why? Just look at it. It's nice work. It's very nice. But there's more to it than nice. Keep looking. Who's the artist? A boy named Warren Hughes. Not so long ago, I knew him and his family quite well. But he does not paint anymore. What am I looking for? What do you see? I see a guy hugging a girl. And? They're probably boyfriend, girlfriend. And she's dumping him. He looks really depressed. Yes, yes. Forget the story. What do you see? I see an oil painting of two humans locked in an embrace. That's all you see? But there's so much more. Look. Look. I see a statement on loss. The guy, he's hugging a girl. And by all rights, he should be happy, but he's not. He's probably already mourning the loss of her, even though that's still somewhere in his future. Statements? Who cares about his statements? Tell me what you see. I see art. Art, yes. And beyond that, beyond art, Truth? Truth. Exactly. A deeper truth. This painting, this particular work of art, speaks a deeper truth. It has a soul. How can a painting have a soul? It has a soul because it has an identity. It has a heart. The memory of this painting will survive beyond this moment. It will linger in your mind, become part of the tapestry of your subconscious. It has made a lasting impression on you. And you're not quite sure why. It's just a painting by some kid. It's not as if it's a Picasso or a Monet. Now you're arguing technique. Not every painting by Van Gogh or Michelangelo is real art either. Although they all demonstrate great technique and, and craftsmanship. And the scribbled drawings of a five-year-old child are rarely technically impressive, but they may still have a soul. They may still be real art. So you're saying real art is not defined by the skill of the artist? Then what is art? If just anybody can create something more real than artists who've spent their entire lives developing their skills? Art is still the work of artists. And skill, craftsmanship, technique... Those things are critical to the success of an artist's work. But alone, those things are merely pretense. 
For something to be real, to be truthful, the artist must transfer, shift part of him or herself into the work to transcend the illusion and reach for the truth of art. And what is the truth of art? Who knows? I've been asking myself that question for years. Excuse me? You don't even know? And what's all this about all the questions and lectures on truth and delusion? For that matter, why did you ask me to come down here in the first place? Because... Actually, you didn't even ask me to come down. I spent my entire afternoon traveling all over Venice, deciphering a cryptic message, spending money I don't have on a subway ticket, only to have to stand here and listen to... to... You saw something this afternoon. A waking dream, and you can't explain it. That's why you are here, isn't it? How the hell do you know these things? It's as plain as the day, Senorita Ryan. You're under a lot of stress. My point about art and truth is this, April. Some things look real, but are not. And other things may appear to be of no consequence at all, but are in fact invaluable. Like Warren's painting here, and your dreams. There is both truth and illusion in dreams, and in the images they create. The problem is in sorting the one from the other. You're telling me my dreams are true? I'm telling you there are things afoot, and that you need help in sorting the truth from the illusions. My help. Well, that figures. Good. I was hoping you'd understand. No. Actually, I didn't understand a single word. You talk about art, and truth, and dreams, and illusions, and I still don't understand what it all has to do with me. There are things happening, yes, and I came here because I thought... Maybe you're crazy enough to believe me, to help me. I don't know, sort through the debris and come up with the plausible explanation. But no, you tell me my dreams might be true, that I need your help, and that there are things afoot. I mean, who says afoot? I've never heard anybody use the word before. There are things afoot. Está bien. I understand your reluctance to believe me, senorita. But I cannot convince you here, now. Meet me tomorrow. What? Meet me tomorrow, and I will tell you everything. Not again, no way. But you will. Because you are compelled to do so by your own curiosity. Because you are drawn to mystery. And because despite your skepticism, you believe I have the answer to all your questions, yes? No. No, I don't care. I just want to have a normal life. No nightmares, no visions, no strangers telling me that things are afoot. Comprende, amigo? Ay, Dios mío. Is that the time? I've got to run, Senorita Ryan. I'll see you tomorrow, then. I said... Goodbye. I'm all scrubbed and ready to work, sir. You'll be on the floor tonight, honey. Start taking orders.